You've probably seen videos like this before. People passing out right on the ride. It's pretty darn funny, isn't it? But in reality, it's not all fun and games. There are other videos from amusement parks that YouTube or TikTok won't let you see. Amusement ride accidents happen almost every day in different countries. No matter how much fun you think those five minutes on roller coasters, carousels, or drop towers are, sudden malfunctions in these machines can lead to terrifying incidents where even death won't be the worst outcome. And when you get into a roller coaster car, you sign yourself up for the possibility of a broken neck and even a lifelong disability. So how do amusement parks turn into torture ones? The most popular rides of all time has to be roller coasters, of course. Today, there are over 2,400 of these rides worldwide, and some folks even believe they have healing properties. In 2016, doctors Mark Mitchell and David Wardinger did something wild. They 3D printed a transparent kidney and put a stone in it. Then they took it about 20 times to Disney World's Big Thunder Mountain Railroad to see how that stone would handle all those ups and downs. Guess what? In about two thirds of the cases, the stone came out of the kidney. These doctors even won a Nobel Prize for it. Too bad they didn't hand out an IQ Nobel Prize to some amusement park owners so that the news of visitors getting hurt on roller coasters would get as much attention as the doctor's groundbreaking research. Because in reality, roller coasters don't heal, they harm. For example, in 2020, a 30-year-old woman decided to hop on a new ride at Fuji-Q Highland Park in Fuji-Yoshida, Japan. These were the Dudunatpa roller coasters, which, unlike regular ones, had a slightly different mechanism. Traditional roller coasters move thanks to gravity, but Du Dodonpa's cars could accelerate rapidly and reach almost 180 kilometers per hour in just one and a half seconds. At that moment, riders experience an insane adrenaline rush and their hearts race like crazy. The insane twists, high climbs, low drops, and of course, the incredible acceleration of Du Dodonpa's cars left the visitor in complete awe, but not for long. A few hours after the ride, she felt severe neck pain. So the woman consulted a doctor who found fractures in her neck and chest bones. Just a few minutes of fun cost her two months of excruciating pain. And injuries like these don't just vanish, they can stick with you for life. Even a minor accident, like slipping, can make things worse. Did they close down the ride after that? Nope. Did they remove the mechanism responsible for the rapid acceleration? Nope again. The park owners decided that the problem wasn't the roller coaster, it was the woman's spine, and it was just weaker than most people's. But the next incident wasn't far off. In 2021, a 40-year-old guy who was perfectly healthy decided to hop on the Du Dunapa roller coaster. And once again, it was the same old thrill. Twists, drops, and that mind-blowing acceleration. But then, a compression fracture of the spine that's the kind of injury you'd expect from a car crash or a high impact sport, not your regular day at the amusement park. So what's going on here? Two similar incidents on the same ride. Is that just bad luck or something more? The park owners didn't think so. It took two more unfortunate incidents before they finally closed down the ride. But remember, these kinds of accidents can happen in just about any city or traveling fair. And it turns out, fractures aren't even the scariest price to pay for extreme thrills. On June 2nd, 2015, 17-year-old Leah Washington and her first date with 18-year-old Joe Pugh. Instead of the usual coffee date, Joe decided to impress Leah with a trip to Alton Towers Amusement Park in Staffordshire, England. The couple stumbled upon the Smiler roller coaster, where the cars go through loops a whopping 14 times. Leah and Joe thought, this is it. The ride was so popular that they stood in line for hours just to get on it. And there they were, off to adventure in their coaster car, when suddenly, at the top of a 27-meter drop, the ride came to a screeching halt. Leah figured it was just a technical glitch that the staff would sort out. But then, out of nowhere, they jerked forward and collided with another immobile car. Leah's legs got pinned between a safety bar and the other car. At some point, she couldn't even feel her left leg anymore. An ambulance came and Leah didn't remember a thing until the next morning. Then she woke up and noticed that most of her left leg was missing, while Joe had broken fingers and two shattered kneecaps. 
Later, it was revealed that a computer glitch had stopped the ride because there was another stalled car on the track, but an engineer mistakenly restarted it. The amusement park owner got fined 5 million pounds and had to cover the medical bills. Now, the girl can only walk with the help of a 60,000 pound prosthetic and she still deals with excruciating pain. You'd think it couldn't get any worse, but it actually could. The creators of these rides joke that designing a roller coaster is harder than launching a rocket into space. The whole secret lies in the fact that the coaster cars grip the track from all sides, which allows them to stay uneven when they go upside down and reach enormous speeds. Yet unfortunately, this design isn't always foolproof. In 2016, Paul McFadden was strolling through MND's theme park in Motherwell, Scotland, but moving around freely was tough. The park was packed with visitors, especially kids, as it was the first weekend of school holidays. Paul was checking out a ride he liked when suddenly he heard a loud noise, like an explosion, and screams. He turned his head toward the commotion and saw a horrifying scene. It turned out that not far away, the roller coaster had derailed and one of the cars had fallen from a height of nine meters. It also smashed the nearby kitty rides. Joe rushed to help. One kid had an iron structure from the ride crush his arm. Most likely, the coaster car derailed when entering a sharp turn. As a result, eight children and two adults suffered severe injuries. You'd think stories like these would force park owners to learn from others' mistakes and avoid repeating them. But a similar incident happened just two years later at Daytona Beach in Florida, when the cars of the local roller coaster derailed. Two men fell from a 34 meter height. Two others were left hanging, desperately holding on to the car until rescuers arrived. Six people ended up in the hospital, including a 12 year old girl with serious head injuries. Jennifer Meal, the spokesperson for the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, said that agency inspectors had conducted a thorough inspection of the roller coaster on the same day as the accident and found it complied with state laws. But then why did it turn visitors' lives into a nightmare? It seems that even inspections of such parks don't always guarantee safety. However, they create an illusion of it for parents who find it hard to say no to their kids when they want to ride the attractions. In 1999, Tammy Matzak from Tyler Sport decided to take her two kids to an amusement park on the New Jersey coast. When they saw the twisting, looping roller coasters of Wild Wonder, their eyes lit up and the little ones started shouting, I want to ride, I want to ride. How could you say no to that, right? So the family got in line, watching other visitors enjoy the rides. The roller coaster cars zoomed through the loops and people screamed with excitement until the cars approached the highest peak of the ride. Suddenly something went wrong. And right before Tammy's eyes, a woman and her little daughter fell out of the car. The mother was Kimberly Bailey, and her eight-year-old daughter was Jessica. They were from Pomona, New York. Since they fell from a height of nine meters, both of them tragically lost their lives. At that moment, Tammy Matzak and her two kids realized that it could have been them. And the only thing that saved them was that their family was just next in line. In the official version, the accident was caused by a series of sudden malfunctions. The safety chain of the ride is supposed to release automatically, allowing gravity to take over as the car gains speeds and hurdles down the twisting tracks. But the chain released prematurely, causing the car to plummet backward. At the same time, the mechanism designed to resist the rollback, like an emergency brake, also failed for unknown reasons. Still, even if you decide to stay away from roller coasters after hearing this news, Keep in mind that it's not the only attraction where you can get hurt or face deadly risks. Many amusement park rides are designed to give you an adrenaline rush with that feeling of falling. The key is for the mechanism to stop you just before you hit the ground or ensure you have a soft landing in water or on a cushion. Take for example, the Superman Tower of Power in Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville. It looks pretty spectacular. So it's no wonder that on June 21st, 2007, 13-year-old Caitlin Lassiter was eager to try it out during her day out with her friends. Caitlin and her friend strapped into the seats and the show began. This ride shoots up to a height of 54 meters and hits a speed of 87 kilometers per hour. Caitlin was thrilled. Since there was no line for the ride, the girls immediately decided to go for it again. But little did they know that it would be totally different this time. 
Their joyride came to a screeching halt with a strange sound that resembled a whip cracking. Then, Caitlin felt the bench jerking unexpectedly. The girls looked up and saw a bunch of cables falling. At that moment, they were about six meters above the ground. Now, they weren't laughing. They were screaming for help at the top of their lungs. But the ride couldn't be stopped, and it continued its ascent. That's when the girls smelled something acrid, like burning machinery, and it dawned on them that the tower had malfunctioned, and likely, death awaited them. They watched in horror as the cables wrapped around passengers nearby. When the ride finally reached its peak, and the operator finally hit the emergency stop button, the benches with the visitors went into free fall. During this fall, Caitlin felt excruciating pain in her legs. Those cables she couldn't untangle had taken both her lower legs just above the ankles. Doctors miraculously managed to save her right leg, but her left one couldn't be rescued. The life of this young girl turned into a true nightmare. The ride's manufacturer, Intamin, claims they provided six flags with user instructions, which they apparently didn't follow. Technicians were supposed to wipe down the cables with a cotton rag every six months to keep them completely dry and prevent slipping. Instead, they, for some reason, decided to apply cornstarch to the ropes. On top of that, the operator didn't hit the emergency stop button right away and was actually on the phone during the accident. Those 10 seconds proved fatal. And once again, when setting up such attractions, park owners should have looked into unforeseen incidents from other parks to prepare for the unexpected. A valuable lesson could have come from the incident involving the drop tower. On August 23, 1999, at Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara, California, this ride towers at 63 meters and plummets passengers straight to the ground at a speed of over 97 kilometers per hour. Nearly 2 million visitors ride it each year, and one of them was 12-year-old Joshua Smurfit from Sunnyvale. He came to the park with his family, who stood by the ride waving to the boy. When Joshua's bench started to rise along the track at some point, the restraining bar that's supposed to secure the passenger in place unexpectedly lifted, and the boy began to fall. Initially, he clung to the bench with his hands, but then he flew forward, somersaulted, and landed right on his head. The child passed away instantly in front of his mother. One of the family members who was on the ride with Joshua mentioned they couldn't recall the staff checking the boy's safety restraints before the launch. Of course, there's no debating the staff's negligence here. Nonetheless, why didn't the adults make sure their kids were properly secured? Unlike the story of the two friends who went to the park with their pals, Joshua's whole family was watching over him. Sometimes, such carelessness can come at a high cost. Even if someone else is keeping an eye on your child, they aren't immune to unforeseen situations. One such incident occurred on May 9, 2017. 11-year-old Eva Janeth embarked on a school trip to Drayton Manor, located in Staffordshire, UK. She chose what seemed like a relatively safe ride at first glance, River Rapids Ride. The girl was seated in a six-person inflatable boat, which was supposed to descend from a high slide into the water. But at some point, Eva decided to switch places with another child. The boat tilted and she fell out. Visitors heard a scream, then the sound of her falling into the water one and a half meters deep. Unfortunately, the depth trapped her at the bottom and she couldn't resurface. Eva lost her life right then and there. When the investigation into the tragedy was open, it drew the attention of Vicky Treacy, a mother whose child had also suffered an ordeal on a similar ride four years prior. Her son, Patrick, had risen from his seat to wave to his mom, causing the boat to suddenly hit the side barriers on the slide, flip over, and capsize. Luckily, Patrick was quickly rescued from the water and only suffered minor injuries. The woman demanded that the park owners thoroughly check the ride's safety, but no one listened. But nothing can compare to the agony that one child endured in Nevada on what was considered the safest ride of them all. Now, folks, take a comfy seat and picture yourself in a roller coaster car. You can even sway from side to side to get the full feel like you're in a real amusement park. Because truth be told, this is the only safe way to ride these attractions. It's better not to risk your well-being unnecessarily. After all, there are still plenty of old school roller coasters and carousels out there that could go haywire. And just as many park owners and operators who might not be quick on their feet in emergencies. Have you ever witnessed something like this? 
Share your stories in the comments below. We've got to put an end to these tragedies. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Here, you'll uncover a ton of facts that might save your life one day.